Earlier this year, I started a conversion series that focused on giving the lowly cultists of the Chaos Space Marines a little unique flair based on the legion or god that they follow. In that series, I tackled every first founding Chaos Legion, with the exception of the Black Legion. Those guys were a little more tricky due to the unfortunate status of being vanilla Chaos Space Marines. However, I sat down and had a think and came up with some ideas that I thought you guys might enjoy. I'm Pete the Wargamer and in this video I'll be showing you how to convert Black Legion Chaos Cultists. The basis of this conversion lay within the Corpse Grinder Cult set. Once again, the Necromunda range provided me with some excellent resources for these cultist conversions. I based this particular conversion on an initiate rather than a slightly larger Skinner, but either could be used. So I removed the components required to build the torso and the legs from the sprue before cleaning up and assembling them. Next, I needed to think about weaponry. The weapons I could choose from were heavily based on the torso I chose. The initiate's torsos are a little narrower and allow for paired gun arms to be attached more easily, whereas the larger skinners would have been better suited for close combat cultists. As I was using the smaller initiate, I could opt for a set of paired range weapon carrying arms. In particular, I chose some shotgun arms from the Gene Sealer Cult's Neophyte kit. That kit has a lot of cultist-friendly weapons such as auto guns, shotguns, flamers, and even support weapons like heavy stubbers. However, to get the arms to fit correctly, I did need to make a few adjustments. I started by flattening out the right shoulder joint by carefully shaving some of the raised details using my knife. I needed a flat surface here that could match the flat joint of the arms. Once I was happy that the surface was flat enough for a solid joint, I could bring in my arms and glue them into place. Now, the bare chest of the torso and the fabric folds of the arms might have looked a little odd at this point, but this can be resolved fairly easily at the painting stage. The chest could be painted as either armor or cloth, which will help to blend it into the arms. Once I had the right arm in place, I could use this as an anchor to ensure that the placement of the left arm was correct. After comparing the left arm against the hand and also the shoulder, I was able to see where the cuts were needed to be made. These adjustments were performed with my knife once again. I made a couple of small adjustments before testing the fit and seeing exactly where I needed to make the next few tweaks. This helped to prevent the cutting going too far and negatively impacting the fit. Once I was happy while well, everything was lining up, I was able to glue the left arm into place. So far, I had the torso and the arms, but next I needed to add a head. Now my theme for this particular set of cultists taps into the elite aspect of the Black Legion. It's not quite as obvious as the other Legion's traits, but it is something that I can work with. As such, I imagine the Black Legion cultists would be among the better armed and equipped, being closer to a military organization rather than just a frenzied rebel. While not quite as ordered as the Alpha Legion's followers, I feel that the Black Legion would occupy similar roles to that of the Gene Stealer cults. So, to help represent this, I chose to outfit my cultist with a slightly more substantial piece of headgear, something that would add a modicum of protection that isn't just a hood or an ornate mask. So I took the head from Acadian Sprue. In its current form, it would be far too bulky and Imperial aligned for my needs, so I needed to make some adjustments. I began by using my clippers to remove the protruding parts of the helmets that were found at the sides and at the back. This considerably changed the profile of the helmet and made the Imperial origins of this component much less obvious. The remaining nubs left from the clippers and also the Imperial Aquila above the brow were then carefully trimmed away to create a smooth, rounded helmet. With the helmet prepped, I could then test out the fit against the torso. Now, unfortunately, not every kit has a ball and socket joint, so the helmet wasn't going to quite fit against the torso just yet. But once again, I turned to my trusty scalpel to begin trimming away at both sides of the neck joint making frequent comparisons as I did so. 
Once I was happy with how the head and torso were lining up, I could finally glue the head into place. With the head in place, the model was completely surfaceable, but the cultist felt a bit lightweight, nowhere near prepared enough to go to war, especially when I considered this particular cultist to be at the more well-equipped end of this cultist scale. To resolve this, I once again looked towards the Gene Stealer cults. Their Neophyte kit comes with a number of different backpack options designed to be used by the special weapon carriers of the unit. However, a good alternative to this could also be found within the Astra Militarum sets too, such as the Heavy Weapon Squads or even the Militarum Tempestus for a slightly more heavy duty appearance. Once I had selected a backpack, I could see that a little trimming was going to be needed to ensure that the pack could be attached to the Corpse Grinder Initiate's torso. So, after comparing, I started to make some trims to the back of the model to ensure a flatter surface was created. Once I was satisfied that everything was fitting together nicely, I could glue the backpack into place. By now, the model was looking a little chunkier, but he still didn't have that chaotic flair. So we needed some dead animal bits. Well, human skulls to be precise, which are technically animal skulls, so that still all works. These skulls were taken from two sources. The spike skull was part of the skull crushers of corn set, whereas the regular skull was from the ever useful citadel skull set. With the skulls picked out, I just needed to pick somewhere to attach them. Around the belt and the backpack seemed to make the most sense, and I opted for the latter. The spiked skull sat nicely on a flat surface found at the top of the pack, whereas the unspiked skull was glued to the side. Here it blended in with the rest of the equipment and helped to bulk out the model even further. Continuing with the precedent of being well equipped, then I started with the backpack. I next wanted to add some additional pouches and equipment around the waist. The choices for the components here are vast. The most obvious choice for human scale parts are the Astra Militarum sets. However, there are also a bunch of Necromunda kits that come with usable pieces too. I chose the pouches from some Cadians. Depending on which set you choose, you may or may not need to remove any equilibrium from them, but once you have selected your pouches, you'll be able to glue them into place around the waist. The final step to complete my Black Legion cultist was to attach a shoulder pad to him. I kind of liked the idea that these cultists would want to emulate the Chaos Space Marines that they follow. They may be nowhere near as well equipped or trained as their masters, but in their twisted minds, if they can look a little bit like them, they can fight a bit like them too. So I grabbed one of the shoulder pads from the House Goliath set. This was a particularly good find as it had the trim that I could paint gold to appear like the Black Legion colours. However, you could source other pads from the House Orlock or House Van Saar kits too. The shoulder pad was attached to the right shoulder, mainly because this had the most space to work with. I also think just having the one pad helps to feed into the haphazard aspect of the Cultus too. And with that, all I needed to do then was to base and paint the miniature, which left me with this. And here we have the completed cultist. I painted him to match the colours of the Black Legion, using blacks, reds and golds for the bulk of the scheme. Again, feeding into that emulation of the Chaos Space Marines that they follow. I also added a little extra Chaos iconography at the painting stage by applying a freehand star of Chaos Undivided to the helmet. This all came together to create a cultist that could fit nicely alongside your Black Legion forces. Now, of course, you don't need to follow this guide to the letter when creating your own cultist. You can mix and match ideas from this guide with other aspects from my other Chaos Cultist guides too. Speaking of which, this now concludes my Chaos Cultist guides for each of the main legions. If you have any other ideas or suggestions for other cultist themes that I could tackle in the future, please do let me know in the comments below. And so, as always, I just want to say a big thank you to all of my supporters and the folks who use my affiliates links. If you would like to help me out with making these videos, you can support me on Buy Me A Coffee as a one-off or as an ongoing membership. And you can find a link to that below. Your help is always greatly appreciated. And if you like this video, then check out my other conversion guides and please do consider subscribing. And so until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.